Welcome to the Somme Vigil podcast series, which tells the story of the Battle of the Somme in the words of those who were there. I'm Simon Bendry, Director for UCL Institute of Education's First World War Centenary Battlefield Tours programme. This series was commissioned by the Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport and developed in partnership with the First World War Centenary Battlefield Tours programme and Chrome Radio. It was first released to accompany the Somme 100 Vigil at Westminster Abbey, held through the night of the 30th of June and into the morning of the 1st of July 2016, to mark the centenary of the Battle of the Somme. We now hear from Lieutenant General Sir Hugh Pike, grandson of Major Reggie Thompson, whose letter home to his mother we listened to in the last podcast. My name is Hugh Pike. I was a soldier myself, as was my grandfather, Reggie Thompson, who was in the Royal Artillery. He served off and on throughout the First World War. And at the Battle of the Somme, he was on the staff of the 7th Division, which is one of the divisions on the southern flank towards the French boundary. The 7th Division, I think, had initial success. The first few days for them were quite an encouraging time, which is hard for us to understand now, but it was the case. He remained with the 7th Division uh, for some months, and then he went back to um, command a battery, artillery battery, and was very quickly wounded, quite badly. Then for the rest of the war, he, he served his time either on the staff or on the Italian front, Reggie died in 1937. I think he was a heavy smoker. In fact, his diaries record the fact that he's made his first cigarette since 1904, I think, as the First World War broke out, when he was a student at the Staff College. And it was immediately, rather, his frustration posted to the staff, therefore, rather than back to his regiment. But anyway, he died of cancer in 1937, aged 57. He wrote these diaries throughout the First World War, and a lot of letters home to his mother, which we still possess, and um, many obviously to his wife, Bridget, who he married whilst he was on leave in 1915 in St George's Hanover Square, where Bridget's father was the rector. So his diaries provide a very interesting source, not only of family history, but obviously insights into the realities of the First World War, and also quite a lot about my grandfather's character. He comes across as being quite strict, quite traditional, quite conventional, not suffering fools gladly. And I think in his book, quite a lot of people were fools. And very, very meticulous, uh, very correct in everything he did, but also suffering from, I think, from possibly quite acute periods of depression. And certainly during the First World War, there were periods when his diary does reflect his deep depression with the general prospects for the outcome of the war and so forth. The diaries are now in the little collection in the Brotherton Library at um, Leeds University. He had very neat writing and he kept these diaries pretty assiduously on a daily basis, one page per day. Sometimes if the day was particularly significant, there would be um, extra bits put in the back of the notebook or the diary. He continued to keep this diary throughout the 1920s and even into the 1930s, right up to the time that he died. He was quite a keen sort of collector of newspaper cuttings. So there are quite a lot of those, including some very colourful, interesting ones from the First World War, like describing soldiers leaving Victoria Station after their leave and so forth, and saying a fond farewell or a sad farewell to their nearest and dearest. Sometimes you put these little tiny photographs of either his dogs or my grandmother or a group of people on the Western Front, so they're in the diary um, as well. Some of his forebears were military, but um, quite a lot of them were clergymen. He went up to Merton College, Oxford, to read theology and was bound for the church and then decided to join the army. When he died, one of the local paper obituaries did imply that he decided to join the army because he couldn't really face the prospect of ministering to devout old ladies for the rest of his life. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. He just missed the South African War, and he was frustrated by that, I think. So he joined a thing called the West Africa Frontier Force in the early years of the 20th century and took part in an expedition in southern Nigeria called the Arrow Expedition, where he was awarded the DSO as a very young officer, which was actually, I mean, with great respect, was quite a commonplace in those days because there were very few other 
military awards available at that time. And the Military Cross, for example, wasn't initiated until the start of the First World War. And then his career continued after that. He um, was at the Staff College at the beginning of the First World War. And that's when his diaries opened, literally with the arrangements for the disposal of his two little dogs, his horse, and seemingly a huge amount of um, baggage and personal possessions in order for him to deploy very early as one of the first of what became known as the Old Contemptibles to the Western Front. You have been listening to The Story of the Somme, a Chrome Radio production for the Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport, in partnership with UCL Institute of Education's First World War Centenary Battlefield Tours programme. The producer was Katrina Oliphant. In the next podcast, a member of the German artillery writes home to his parents after seeing action on the Somme.